All right, let's have fun today. All right, this is the problematic podcast. Yeah, that's smart, Brandon. We're in the problematic. Being problem addicts. Yeah, and uh, special guest, Nico Bowling, everybody. Hey. Woohoo, right. give it up for Nico. All right. Get your one look at the camera. You can say, yeah, you can look I, I, wise. I gotta, I gotta wave. Yeah. All right, so um, touch and poop, huh? <laughs> let's get, let's go. go ahead. Have you ever? You ever touched your own poop? With my hands? Well, I mean, obviously my fingers have slipped through and fucking, you know, touched my asshole before. So I, I've never really, like, intentionally touched my own shit, but one time I took a dump in the woods behind my grandfather's house up in uh, Pennsylvania, and, um... I like, you know, that's the thing is like, when you take a shit in the woods, it's like, okay, but this is one, I'll be fine as long as I don't step in it. Mm-hmm. And I stepped in it, and I was, uh, I was wearing Crocs. So <laughs> it got like in the holes of the Crocs and got all in between my fucking toes and shit. So I had to like walk a quarter mile back to my <laughs> grandfather's house through the woods with this fucking shit filled Croc. All right. Why were you wearing, I mean, I don't know what's more upsetting about this story the shit on the shoes for a quarter mile. Or that you were wearing Crocs. Well, I mean, wearing I was, Crocs in dude, the woods? I, I was like, well, I mean, it's not like I was fucking going for it. I was just going for it, like, walk in the woods. But, like, why do you own Crocs? Yeah, I was, like, I was like uh, 13, 14 at the time. Mm. What you got against Crocs? Too old or too young <laughs> to be going through such a thing. I guess it depends on how you look at it. Uh, Are you ever too old or too young for Crocs? The answer is always. Oh, man. Yeah, let's start with the Crocs. What was going on there? <laughs> the, I've never owned a pair. What the hell is up with this anti-Croc sentiment? The only people that wear Crocs are the people who work in the medical profession. I've never heard the pro Crocs sen- <laughs> sentiment, so let's I hear mean, it. Yeah, go ahead. They're, they're, they're shoes. That's it. That's. I, but I, why would you? Why did you? That they're day? not shoes. They're fucked up clogs. I was. I, I guess they are fucked. Made up out of clogs. plastic. I got, I got. I got them for like Christmas or something. I don't know how I came into a pair of Crocs at 13 years old, but I had a pair of Crocs and I was wearing them in the woods and I stepped in my shit. Well, you must have been bad that year if that's what Santa got you were some mm-hmm. fucking Crocs. Were they, were they like orange? I liked them. No, they were the blue ones. Okay. They were the, they were the mellow Crocs. It to make it okay, uh-huh. but it makes it better. Uh-huh. Easier to swallow. It's kind of funny, though, that you bring up the Crocs in the medical profession thing. Who said that? Was that you? That was, that was you? me. That was you, yeah, because yeah. my dentist. I wouldn't know such a thing. Crocs. I do. I've seen plenty of people with Crocs <laughs> in nursing homes. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. I would get camo Crocs. If I had to wear Crocs, I'd get camo. Probably like forest camo Crocs. So you see that you would be wearing them in the forest like Nico did? Mm. Yeah, I'd wear them while I hunt, but I'd definitely wear them while I'm cutting my meat. (laughs) I got a big old uh, 40,000 pound deer Mm. in the garage. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, bro. You ever just take down a 40, a 20 ton deer? I've never gone hunting, but I can totally see that. 40,000 pound deer I, f- I fed a city Camo Crocs Fucking drinking some PBR Blasting Ted Nugent and shit Hell yeah Disemboweling mm-hmm. deer Wearing tank tops You better yeah. believe it Oh yeah baby Dana you Have you ever touched poop? Yeah I've touched poop Um I've touched my own poop <laughs> Probably at least eight times Eight? I don't know Damn. I'm just, I don't remember eight particular times, but if I remember doing it in the fashion that I did a couple times, there's a good chance I Uh did it when I couldn't remember doing it. Uh Like more than five, but less than ten. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's fair. Um, Yeah, I would just, I touched my shit on acid once, took a shit, and then I thought it was strange. Like, it's just, it's kind of, it's like a hack bit almost, but like being sad that you got to flush your poop. Because it was like a part of you. And like it was just inside of you. And when you're on acid, that means a whole different thing. Uh, and so uh, your little poop, baby. Yeah, I looked at my shit and it was just like, oh shit. Like I just, for some reason I thought about like, damn, I've been shitting since I was little. And that was just such a, like an emotional, uh, provoking thought. Damn. Yeah. So I touched it and then I flushed it. And it felt weird watching it disappear. I like your friends had left the party early. Uh. Mm-hmm. It was like having to put down a dog. My turds are my dogs. <laughs> yeah, Atlas is my first puppy, but I've been, mm. you know, I've been raising dogs my whole life, <laughs> taking dumps. Oh yeah, baby. Yeah, I go boom boom in Daddy's bed. I go boom boom in Daddy's side of the bed. I say sorry. What are you gonna do to me, Daddy? Are you gonna hit me? <laughs> Does he hit you? Yeah, he catch me. Good luck. <laughs> Fucking what? <laughs> <laughs> That's how your dad stayed in shape, mm-hmm. chasing you around. Yep. Covered in shit like a greased-up pig. That's why he's yeah. That's why my dad's so uh, 
lean and thin and ripped. Mm-hmm. Yeah. From all that fucking. Because he still chases me, huh. and like, but the thing is, he only sees me twice a year now. Huh. So when I go up there, only After twice. I, I gotta make it count. Yeah. Yeah. I take a shit in a weird place, and then I make him chase me for like <laughs> two and a half days on and off. Throw him behind the fridge. I throw him a backpack. It's filled with like rations, and like a utility <laughs> knife, and. <laughs> And uh, go I go, good luck. Yeah. Watch me go. It's your bug out bag. Watch yeah. me go. Fucking A, man. Go boom, boom, in the sock drawer. Nice, bro. Tricked you. That's fake shit. Where's the real shit? Uh, Who knows? I'm taunting things. you. I'm taunting you, daddy. It's in a shoe. Enjoy your retirement. No, bro. Fucking baby take, boys in town. Take a shit in the sock and then throw the sock into one of the AC vents. Ooh. Uh, there you go. That's pretty sinister. Uh, Is this, I feel like you might have done that before, Nico. No, but I did hide, like, there was this one time we were hanging out at my a friend of mine's apartment and he got like blackout drunk and he just went to bed and so it wasn't like crazy we weren't like doing like a crazy party or anything but a friend of mine is also like a really good artist and he had like a stack of index card on his table and uh so he just drew like at least between the th- between the three of us we probably drew like at least like 150 pictures of dicks on index cards <laughs> and just put them everywhere like because i just think like the whole point is that we wanted to like make it so he kept finding them while he was living there but we also wanted to hide so many that then like after he moved out the next tenant would continue to find these pictures of dicks so we put them in the fucking ac vent behind the fridge what <laughs> brilliant like, young man uh-huh, uh-huh. that's awesome uh-huh. that's 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 prolific almost. Uh-huh. It was a lot of fun. I did something not like that, but where something that haunted someone forever. Hmm. My he actually, it was like my good friend in high school, and I don't know why, but I thought it was funny. Me and my friend, we would like hide. He had like a big suburban. We would uh-huh. just like hide in his car, like and he'd be driving home, and we would like pop out. Like, and he just oh hated God. us. <laughs> One time, we broke into his car, and we went before we went and bought a whole bunch of crickets, like. Oh my Hundreds god! Hundreds of crickets, dude. You put bugs loose in his <laughs> fucking car. Do you remember dude? how much that cost? It was like less than. It was very cheap for crickets, like seven bucks. Maybe I just want to know what I'm heading into if I ever need to buy a shitload of crickets. I got a cricket guy. Just let me know. Okay. He can hook you up. But um, yeah, that was pretty fucked up. Mm. I pissed in someone's shoe before. Jesus! What the fuck? <laughs> While it was still on their foot. <laughs> How'd you manage that? You, like, pissed down the side of it? Uh, it was, like, one of those sneakers, you know, so I just... How much did there. he pay you? It was, like, Air Force Ones with the vent holes in the front. Yeah. And he just pissed on it so much that eventually... So just slept foot. in there, you know. Like, when you're just, like, walking through, like, dewy grass in the morning. That's kind of how I left that. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. A little bit of heartburn. Was it the piss in the shoe story? Oh, uh, no, no. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not disgusted. I got a little bit of heartburn. I'm sorry. It's but, the lasagna he ate in the car on the way over mm-hmm. here. Oh, yeah. Stouffer's or homemade? No, I was like fucking just eating some homemade lasagna. Driving, he has a lasagna maker in the center feet. console. Uh huh. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, listen to some Louis Prima while I beat my wife and talk about how much I hate Moulin. Yeah. <laughs> but you should know he only beats his wife while he's driving. While you're uh-huh. Okay. Oh, yeah, safety first. Yeah. Okay, when they're good. home, home base. Is it because standards. she fucked up the lasagna? Uh huh. Uh-huh. Well, she broke the machine in his car that makes lasagna. Uh-huh. He has a, yeah, I, ne- I never beat her at home. At home, I just stick my thumb up her ass when she's not looking. Oh. <laughs> that doesn't sound like a punishment. <laughs> well, depends on how you look Are at you it. into butt stuff, Nico? I've never done any butt stuff. Uh, I'm afraid of getting duty on my dick. Yeah, I don't understand why people are into butt stuff. <laughs> well, it's like there's, there's people that are into butt stuff, and then there's people who aren't into butt stuff. I'm, I, yeah. And butt stuff people are into the shit on their dick, I guess. They're filthy sodomites that will burn. I don't out. understand <laughs> eating ass. That's the real problem. I've ate ass, but only in the shower. Okay, that's... Funny. You gotta know what you're working with. Like uh-huh. Nico says in a bit, you gotta get... Let me look at it first. Uh-huh. Like, you gotta scout it out. You can't no, just seriously. go eat an ass all willy-nilly. I know I said this as part of a joke, but I'm dead-ass serious. If, I, if you want me to eat your ass, you need to get in the shower with me. We're gonna shower together, and I am going to wash your ass for you because I don't trust you to do it yourself. Mm-hmm. If I'm putting my tongue up against your ass, I need to make sure that it's absolutely 100% shit-free, and I not even get out of the shower and then eat your ass because I know it only takes like a couple of minutes for that ass juice to start... Setting back in, mm-hmm. so only well, still in the that. still in the presence of fucking water running. running water. Yeah. Do you use like a loofah or like a washcloth? Oh no, I'm white as shit, so I just soap up my hand and go to town. And that you yeah. think that does a sufficient job? He has Sicilian oh. palms. They're uh-huh. like, oh, uh, yeah. yeah, they're like, hey. what are those called? The stones that you bring into the shower and scrub your stones. Palm stones. Uh-huh. Yeah, he has palm stone palms. Uh-huh. It's a Sicilian thing, baby. I know. Uh-huh. I've been hit with one before. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> what the fucking bead you with a pumice stone? They're light, though. I can't imagine that hurting too bad. Did it hurt? Yeah, I got a black guy. Oof. It was, 
I got uh, hit, yeah. Is this a traumatic story, or can you I ask you? You got a black her? eye, or you got a black guy? Yeah, really you snicker on, liquor. Where's this story going? <laughs> it was from a black guy. Uh, they don't have the Sicilian pulse. The go-to <laughs> weapon of all black guys, pommel stones. <laughs> if I know one thing. I, don't, uh, I think they're called pommel stones. I'm not going to be one of those lame-ass white people that pretends to know everything about black culture, but what mm-hmm. I know for sure... Every single black man on the planet, their go-to weapon's a pommel stone. Oh, yeah, bro. One time they mugged you me. And, uh, when I was living up in Lantana, I was walking out of work one day, and these fucking black dudes just rolled up on me. Fucking black. These <laughs> fucking black these dudes. These fucking... <laughs> I went to go get a pedicure a, the other day, was, and I was like, Well, nope. they mugged me. I can be, I can be slightly racist. Yeah. <laughs> They're so... What's that guy who made up the story about being mugged? Jesse me, Smollett. Me just yeah, now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you? I'm just trying to roll with the pit. <laughs> yeah. No, these are all real oh, stories. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, to- I totally, they, they stole my, they stole my foreskin. Yeah. They were black Israelites. They stole Faking my hate crimes. <laughs> 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 yeah, the articles of Zion. Um, <laughs> I gotta write that one. Yeah, they beat him, they beat him half to death with a copy of the... The Articles is that, is that what it's called? The Articles is I, I don't know. All I know is that they call themselves the Black Israelites. I wasn't in that long. Mm. No, oh. <laughs> they figured me out pretty quick. Uh, uh, they found your swastika tattoo. I was I was fucked up once, and I was skating past um, like Black Israelites on the corner, like mm. just doing the thing, just going off. And I skated past them, and I looked at them. I was like, "But I love black people." And what did they say? I don't know. They just kind of like, what the. I hope they followed you. Off put by. It. Maybe after you skated off, they were like, oh, well, that was a little off-putting, but what a well-meaning young man. I mean, if I had to join, like, Mormons, Jehovah's Witness, or the nation, mm-hmm. go in nation. Oh, no, Full dude. I d- well, I mean, you're a woman, though. I'd totally go Mormon so I could have, like, seven fucking fine-ass, thick-ass wives. There you go. Uh, or, you know, or maybe you I'd You know be... I'm into weird shit. I wouldn't mind yeah. the other wives. And they could, like, do the laundry. I could uh-huh. just yeah, do the suck yeah. do the dicks. Or, you're you know. the designated dick sucker. Yeah, they uh-huh. can rear the children, uh-huh. and I'll just... Blown. That really sounds so very overwhelming, having two wives. Uh, I would have I to be so you. rich and uh-huh. capable of such justified arrogance. Uh-huh. But but that's the thing, though, is because we're thinking about this as normal people, but you got to think about it as a Mormon. Remember these bitches. Try to gonna, aim your face at them. Yeah, but you remember these bitches are going to be like dumb as shit, though. So they're not going to be. Cozy. They're not going to be holding you to the same standards. Just move your chairs a little a, closer. A, so a non-Mormon would. Here we go. I also probably would. It's a learning process, folks. I think this is the sixth episode. Yep, right, growing ahead. pains, no big deal. And I just an honorable mention. I think I could fit in pretty well with the Amish because I already got like the beard. Like when I put on a straw hat, I look fucking dead ass Amish. Fuck yeah, you do. Uh huh. Hell yeah. Uh-huh. Like just get behind a horse and buggy. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. I could see it. Turn some butter. Uh huh. I think that'd be really good for you. I probably would if we're being honest. I would love to see you just like erect a church. Like the side oh, of the yeah, church. fucking uh, barn raising. Yeah, I love that shit. Uh, I would love to see you barn raise. I could uh, sit out in the field for hours just watching you barn raise with uh, the Amish. Uh, Nico, do you think been, you could be I, a cult I've, leader? I've been meaning to say this to you for a long time, and I'm fine. I'm glad it finally came up. I would watch you I'm, barn I'm, raise. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I know this is a bit, but I'm genuinely flattered. Thank you. Let's drive up to Lancaster <laughs> and just make some dreams come oh, true. Yeah. <laughs> well, you guys send me pictures? Yeah, of course. I like that you no, guys made up. You won't because for... you can't use technology out there. I'm going to be respecting Oh, that's customers. true. Can you draw that's me true. a picture oh, no, and they, send I it? I think they'd let you take a picture. you got to take your shoes off before you go in their house. you got to bow. Um, you got to use chopsticks. No. The Amish. Oh, yeah. No, that's the Amish. Oh. Yeah, you're right. Um, you got to <laughs> say three Hail Marys. Mm. you got to suck th- the oldest guy's dick. That's just like any there good housewarming thing that you do. Oh, you yeah, got, I mean, you bring oh. wine you got, and you suck a dick. you got to suck the oldest guy's dick. <laughs> yeah, you know the Amish, that old Amish custom where uh-huh. they um Yeah, they take you in front of the village elder and he drops trial. So I don't know. Do they, do they call each other elder? That's Mormon. Well annually they ch- they choose a new teenager from the community, right? Uh male or female these days, I think. Uh-huh. Oh yeah. Gender they're, they're they're very progressive, very progressive, progressive Amish. in the yeah. Amish yeah. community. Yeah. Uh-huh. And you gotta suck the oldest guy's dick. Uh-huh. To, uh, it's like has something to do with uh-huh. um, warding off the vapors, but also like wisdom uh-huh. and profound knowledge. You know how, like, Consuming knowledge. You know how like there's the body of Christ is the is the Eucharist and the blood of Christ is the wine, like the cum of the village elder. That's like the lymphatic fluid of Christ. Mm. 
So I also feel like it's a the fountain of youth too. What I need you here for. Let's go. Start getting into like niche niche medical niche terminology educational jokes. stuff. Yeah, <laughs> just go on rants. Medical tell us tell us weird shit about history. Come yeah, on. Yeah, do oh, it. Fucking what well, shit? Are you really? I already got that fucking. I'm sure I've talked both years about this before. My whole thing about transmissible sponge and form encephalopathy. Say that again. Tra uh, TSE for short, transmissible sponge form encephalopathy. Explain. It's basically well, I'll try and make it short and sweet. I the reason why I've looked into it so much is because I kind of have the idea where I want to write like a semi scientifically plausible screenplay for a zombie movie. Okay. And because I've heard about this because uh, you, you've heard of Mad Cow, right? Mad yeah, Cow yeah. disease. Of course. That's a form. No, of, what's that? Uh, it's a form of transmissible spongiform encephalopathy, and what that is, it's not caused by a virus or a bacteria. It's caused by something called a prion. What that mm. is is because it usually comes about when, like, you feed the brain of an animal to that same animal. Okay, right. I've heard about so, this. So, yeah, something gets fucked up, and it's, like, basically this certain protein that's necessary for brain function comes in contact with the, like, you know, the foreign brain matter, and it starts manufacturing it, the protein, backwards. Mm -hmm. And once it does that enough times, you're just fucked, and it doesn't matter... Like, there's no way to cure it. You're just fucked. Oprah was behind this, right? Yeah, like, apes can't eat the brains of other apes, right? Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. uh-huh. And so, once that happens, it's called spongiform encephalopathy because you, you know how a sponge, like, it has holes in it. Mm -hmm. You just basically start getting blood pockets in your brain, and it causes erratic behaviors. And, you know, mad cow makes them aggressive and shit. And, you know, some people just makes them go into a coma and shit. But I have a friend of mine. She's a friend of the family. She worked as a veterinarian for the military, and mm -hmm. she got flown over to, like, Ireland or Scotland or something because there was, like, an outbreak of something called scrapie. Scrapie mm. is a form of a transmissible mm. spongiform encephalopathy in sheep. What an adorable name for such an awful, uh -huh. awful condition. I know. Well, the I got a little scrapie this weekend. Well, the reason they call it scrapie is because it makes them have, the, like I said, the TSC leads to, like, all sorts of different weird, odd behaviors, and scrapie specifically causes the sheep to, like, scrape up against, like, rocks and fence posts and shit. And they just got like an itch they're trying to... Yeah, but it, like they scrape themselves down to the bone. So yeah, that's what I was thinking. So it's that's like, why they call it scrapie. Uh-huh, exactly. But, yeah, Not so, so cute, is it, Dan? So that's that's my whole idea. That's my whole idea about the zombie sketches. It's like there's like an outbreak of TSE and so instead, fucking people scraping their faces off and going out to like bite people. And, get, and that's another thing is it can be spread through bites. TSE can be spread through bites. Uh-huh. So it's prions this time mm -hmm. instead of a bacterial outbreak or something, yep. a viral outbreak. Mm -hmm. So basically you just like feel like you did a whole bunch of bath salts. I, I guess. I guess. Oh, yeah. yeah, I remember that dude a bit off. I still remember yeah, the dude. Yeah, off his face. I, now I, I want to try it. I remember specifically the first story that came out about that. And I remember specifically the homeless guy's name was Popo. So <laughs> shout outs to Popo if you're out there somewhere. R.I.P. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's still alive. He just doesn't have a face. I mean, mm. but, that's the life I want to live. Don't we all? Yeah, mm. face. You ever just feel like you're alive without a face? <laughs> <laughs> every oh, day, bro. every day I wake up. So you know, where's deep, this man. face of mine? Yeah, sure, I'm here, I'm living, I'm breathing. Uh, where's my fucking face? I know, bro. I'm confused. Bro, I'm just like just a fucking feather in the people, wind. Man. Yeah. That's why you have so many mirrors in your house, Dan. I'm a dumpster oh. feather. Well, if I'm it's a any... feather that goes on a beautiful journey. Like, like the forest gum? Like the forest gum feather, but except... I'm into my flight. I land in a dumpster. I get stuck in a bunch of sweet and sour sauces from a <laughs> Chinese restaurant. Polynesian well, sauce? Sweet and sour sauce from a Chinese restaurant. All right. If it's any consolation, the face that I can see is very handsome. Thank, Thank you. you. Remember to talk into the mic. I'm oh, concerned gotcha. with how this is all going to sound. And hold okay. this maybe a little yeah. Oh, yeah. I should sit differently so you could see me easier or something. Uh -huh. Yeah, Sorry. Dan. I just want to help. Uh -huh. I want Come this to over. Be as good join, as join our circle. There we go. It's the circle I'll just of look trust. Up at you guys like this. <laughs> <laughs> the whole. That could be like the just the, the theme of the show is just Steph is normal and then I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> I could get in on this. I'll just start picking my nose. The best is when we, you make weird faces. Yeah. I'm try. I'm trying to incorporate more faces into my stand-up comedy. Stand-up comedy. This is just fucked up, man. Uh, I'm, I'm having a good time. I'm sure, I'm sure it's not going to dissuade you. You can just hold your wire a little bit. Uh -huh. no, wait. Wait. Uh, Each, now, guys, hold your wires. Show Steph, me your Steph, wires, guys. Where pull your fucking weight. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> fucked. Pull your row, bitch. Hold your sister's <laughs> wire. Stop pulling your sister's wire. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dan. Yeah, okay, that's the thing, too, with the problematic podcast. When you come on, you're a sibling. 
to step oh, okay. in for however long we record. That's right. You're, we're a family. Me and uh -huh. Dan are brother and sister. So now you are a part of our family. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm the sorry. sister. She's the brother. Yep, absolutely. All right. Yep. They, uh, they broke the mold when they made us. <laughs> we were made in a factory. We were designed. I've, I've heard that expression before, and I never quite understood it. It's not bad. I kind of understand it now. But it's yeah, it's not a great expression. Because uh -huh. if something breaks the mold, it's gonna come out all fucked up. Mm -hmm. That is a good. Yeah, like a jelly mold. You don't want to break maybe, that. Or maybe uh -huh. who knows? Maybe in sculpting and shit, breaking the mold is just the expression for when it sets, and it's set so well that the. That. Because if you see, question. sometimes they put the two sides. Uh -huh. Maybe when it, breaking the mold is when it's set so perfect it just comes apart. But I could be totally talking out of my ass. I didn't sculpt for very long. About as long as I was in the. Um, the black Israelites. <laughs> I took up sculpting. That's did, what you where, did. Where you, did you? When you, you have to have it like a hobby when you apply. I barely got anything published. Let's just put it that way. I got like one thing in the Vatican, one sculpture. I did. <laughs> big fucking deal. Big, big uh, whoop. Okay. Yeah, you remade the statue of David, but gave him like a absolutely massive brolic dick. Just, no, it was actually Alf sitting on a bench. <laughs> <laughs> And he had already, he's holding a saw, and you can see he clearly already sawed off one of his legs. And he was smiling like, am I going to do the other one, Samba? Hey, somebody stop me! <laughs> That's fucking great, dude. I don't know what it is about the Vatican. I just want to saw off my legs. You know, actually, the reason why the Statue of David has a, a small penis is because back in the old... Greek times when they sculpted him, mm -hmm. large penises were a sign of a unintelligent and brutish man. Mm -hmm. So they not gave the, him not the kind of guy you want to bring home the mama. Exactly. No, not, <laughs> not the kind of elder's dick I want to suck. Oh yeah. Oh hell no. <laughs> you want to make sure you suck. The elders got just the tiniest little smart. You guys, I encountered <laughs> a, a micro penis. Can I tell you? Uh -huh. What they exist. Uh -huh. It was the. I really liked this guy. We were like kind of dating, but we. Uh -huh. It was but in college. Did, but did you come? <laughs> hey, hey, got him. Hey. <laughs> uh, you don't get a high five. Um, but yeah, you, no, they really do exist. Nose. It was like, you know, like a push pop, like at the very end when it's like sharp but so small. You it's know what been I'm ages about? since I had a push pop, but, but I do know what a micro penis is. Oh, okay. Yeah. You've encountered one too. Oh, I, I had a. Uh, I'm not naming any names, but I had a friend of mine that was. He was like my neighbor. Uh -huh. So this was when I was living with my mother in Lantana. There was a dock behind her building. And so, like, it would be, like, me, one of my friends who I've known my whole life, we'd go out there and drink. And then there was this a, a woman who was, like, in her 30s and a dude who was, like, in his late 20s that we would hang out. And we all got really close. Eventually, he was always talking about how tiny his dick was. And since he was my bro, obviously, I'm going to be like, ah, oh, no, you're just, you're just yeah. dipped down on yeah. yourself. But, like, eventually he ended up hooking up with a neighbor girl. And uh, she was like, yeah. His lady? Like, yeah, it's like, no, not his lady, oh, it's just oh. the neighbor lady okay. that had the hots for him. And You're telling like, me you didn't have a neighbor lady? <laughs> yeah, what the like fuck? you hooked up with? The f no, yeah. just, you didn't have a neighbor lady where yeah. shit happened with her in your Weird life? Weird shit goes down. Uh -huh. She uh -huh. consoles you. You are home now. Come, come. Uh -huh. Makes you enchiladas. Uh -huh. No, she was Mexican fucking, pizza. She actually ended up being a huge piece of coke addicted shit and her fucking N.A. boyfriend punched Coke her addicts face are usually so sweet. That's yeah, strange. They're, and you, they're usually such good people. They're fucking boyfriend somehow managed to convince himself that I fucked her even though I never laid a hand on her and he punched me in the fucking face and broke my glasses and she ran off with him. Jesus. Uh -huh. Well, I hope he had a micro penis uh -huh. too. Yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, there's micro penis and then there's macro penis. <laughs> I feel like it's a economy Which would of you scale. rather have? Which is worse? <laughs> I believe One, the pronunciation like a, I want like a middle class dick. Yeah. A, a dick just middle insanely class dick. big that you don't know what to do with it? or No. No, a middle class dick, just someone that goes to work every day, good blue collar guy, you know, pays his taxes, has a 401k, takes yeah. you out to date night. Yeah. Just a good middle class, like nine inch dick. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Nine inches, the official penis size of the middle class. <laughs> All and round. it's disappearing more every day. <laughs> Bring back the middle class dick. Uh. Not if Bernie has anything to say about, we're going to bring back the nine inch. Everybody get nine inches. Everybody We're gets nine have inches. Nine inch dicks in this country. How big do you think Bernie Sanders' dick is? Too big. It almost killed him. So big. <laughs> it almost killed him. He just had a heart attack. You know what I Oh that? man. It's because he got a boner so fucking uh, big it almost killed him. Or maybe he's got like an or maybe he's got like an above average dick, but he likes taking the dick pills to like make it huge. So. He just likes the way they make him feel. Uh, it's not okay. even about what they do to his dick. He just likes I like how it makes me feel lightheaded before I go out and I give a speech. That's why he has that bad <laughs> posture from all like 
Uh, just as dick being so just big, just around, carrying around, carrying a load. Fucking it's like when girls have big drunk tits. cock. Yeah, <laughs> it's about as big as this mic stand. That's great. Yeah, that's great. We're figuring it out. One day uh, this is going to be a really well done podcast. Uh, I'm having a great but time. Yo, bro, I'm having uh, a blast. I just hope it's good. I mean, we have yeah. a lot of fans. Well, once this gets released, it'll, this will be like the sixth one. That's, so I'm sure we've acquired people in, in India, uh-huh. the Middle East, our uh-huh. European fan base. So we just want to make sure that they can really yeah, yeah, walk away some, with. Yeah, I heard yeah. you guys getting are actually. We're getting some nibbles. We're getting some nibbles out in Syria. I'll tell Oof, you that. Yeah. Um, uh, Dubai. Yep. Big time. Abu Dhabi. We got high rises in our future, sweetheart. Hell yeah, They love baby. us out in Dubai. They'd be showing us love out in Dubai. They love the problematic podcast. Yep. And then they let me wear caftans and drink, even though you're not supposed to. But they let me get fucked oh, up yeah. and just see what happens when a white girl gets wasted. Uh, it gets weird. Uh, hey, Dubai, <laughs> I guess I'll try it. Hey! hey. God. It's funny, whenever anyone brings up Abu Dhabi, the only thing I know about it is that's the place that Garfield used to mail normal to. <laughs> <laughs> that's only something that you would fucking think of. You guys didn't like Garfield? No, I, you, you <laughs> love Garfield. Hey, everybody learns differently. Uh, you Some people lessons? need to anchor all their knowledge to Garfield. You don't. <laughs> it's Garfield. Lasagna. Yeah, everybody's lasagna got today? something. Some people got religion. Some people need drugs. Nico needs drugs, alcohol, and Garfield uh, to. And conspiracy theories and obscure medical knowledge. There you go. I guess I do have a lot more of a personality than I can. You have a great personality, Nico. Oh, I love you to death. I think you're the best. You're one of my favorite people in the whole comedy oh, I feel scene. The same way about you, Dan. One of my favorite yeah. comics. It was hilarious, like when people were coming up to me, being like, "What's this beef with Nico Bowling?" I'd be like, "You're really that fucking stupid." <laughs> <laughs> I had people ask me. It goes about out to it. all of you, all twelve of the yeah. comics that'll hear this in the next four years. <laughs> um, well, I, I don't, don't hate Nico Bowling. Yeah. Fake. I said it right in the fucking uh, caption yeah, on the post. No, we were I said fake around. beef is the best beef. Uh, What's wrong? Like, why do you hate Nico? Um, what uh, the fuck, man? Well, I mean, I get, I, in their defense, I mean, there is a lot of, like, bullshit drama that goes around. I mean, you and me tend to avoid it because we don't, I mean, and you too. I mean, we're I not, just, yeah. yeah, we're just there to fucking do our set and, you know, chill and shoot the shit with, with our friends. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I don't even know how people, get, I mean, it's fun to, like, I mean, I feel like there's definitely some high school gossip component to it, but, uh-huh. like, to actually have a beef with someone, uh-huh. like, come on, dude. Mm-hmm. It's like, I don't know. I'm not there to, like, fight, like, in a parking lot. I did enough of that when I was younger. Uh-huh. Like, I need to work on these shitty-ass jokes. Wherever I am, I'm there to fight in the parking lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Dude, and I love fighting in parking lots. Dude, love it. I love uh-huh. fighting. I, I get in one fight a day. You got, it's how else am I going to stay fit? Sometimes they're with animals. Yep. I get uh-huh. f- never once punched. Yeah. <laughs> you just I've, been been I've been in a fight every day of my life and never been hit. Fuck it's yeah. crazy how good at fighting I am. <laughs> you're, you're a real street fighter, Dan. Dan, yeah. have you actually ever done any fighting? Like, either... Train fighting? Uh-huh. No. Uh-huh. Um, and I've only been in a couple fights in my uh-huh. life. Drunk boxing at all with your buddies? Yes. Nice, me too. Totally. Xanax boxing. Hell Xanax yeah. Boxing? I pay money to watch that. I run dude. like a chicken ring, like uh-huh. underground thing. Just get yep. people fucked up on Xanax. Uh-huh. Have does them that, fight each other. Does it hurt when you get hit when you're, if you're on Xanax? Um, you know something's happening to you. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's uh-huh. the best way I put it. Uh-huh. I've never done Xanax. What? No, dude. Whenever I'm not anyone's... missing anything. It's yeah. like arguably, it's a good argument for like maybe one of the worst drugs. Uh-huh. In my, I, I shouldn't say that. Not like that's common knowledge. The I juice isn't worth the squeeze. When uh-huh. it comes Most to people Xanax. I know that have done a bunch of it recreationally have nothing but bad stories about it. Uh-huh. Yeah, I mean, I've I've never done a recre. I've done it because uh-huh. I'm like a psycho, and sometimes I needed uh-huh. to take a Xanax in my life. But yeah, taking Xan, I used to take too much Xanax because I did too much coke, and then I would need to. T- I would take like bars, uh-huh. and that was. I withdrawed for like two weeks. It was like one of the worst experiences of my Damn whole dude. life. And after that, I was like, I'm cool on taking Xanax. Yeah, Xanax like and benzos, it feels like an empty drunk, uh, like an emptier drunk. Huh. And then the withdrawal, like the brain zaps. Oh, oh. Makes, brain zaps. Makes, oh. Yeah, it's like, like your brain feels like you're literally getting zapped when you're going through Oof, withdrawal. That's like nice. you can die from a Xanax withdrawal. Damn, that's like, oh, that's yeah, it's horrible for you. That was the worst withdrawal I ever went through when I went to yeah. my first actual detox. I was kicking dope and Xanax. The Xanax Ooh, was worse. Mamma Mia, that was uh, not a fun four days. Not a good <laughs> time. You just really want to die every split second of the day, and the days feel like they're weeks long. Mm-hmm. Damn, dude, that sucks, bro. Yeah. Get some, get some more problems. Yeah, no. No? Fucking. It's the only adversity I've ever really went through. <laughs> just because I chose to do heroin and got addicted to it and had to deal with the consequences of it. You know what I mean? 
It's brought upon yourself. Some people got to make their own adversity. Some, they, you know, some of these privileged fucking marginalized people <laughs> born in a life, they're just handed adversity on a silver platter. Me? Nah. No By the fam. sweat of my fucking brow, I went out there and found a reason to feel like I'm less than than everybody in society. I, that would do my own fucking hard work. You did that, Dan. I don't want to hear these fucking women or these fucking people of color <laughs> talking about how they... You got adversity from the gate. And yeah. it made you awesome. Do you understand you what me? that means? The, all the non-privileges you had, what a privilege it was to have that? <sighs> I mean, I had... Everyone in my family was addicted to drugs. No one had savings accounts or jobs or... All of my shit got pawned growing up. It was mm. just the cops always knocking on your door. Mom, pick me up from school because I was in all those 20 clubs and no one ever could find me. And I'm just like, oh, like this bitch again. Your mom forgot. And I'm like, oh, my God. Like, oh, boy. Well, it's not a big deal. Stuff, it's fine. Yeah. Every time I'd, uh, every time I shot dope, as I was pushing the plunger down, I'd go, hey, privilege bites. Hey. And I'd look around the room and I was never around anyone. Make I would just talk one. to the imaginary people because I've been up for a couple of days. <laughs> Hey, privileged bites, am I right, fellas? Hey. <laughs> Just looking at the posters on my wall. <laughs> NSYNC, Backstreet Boys. Yeah. That's who you did heroin with. Oh, yeah. It would have been funny if I was all strung out on dope with an NSYNC poster in my room. Just Joey Fatone. That's a cool visual. Just watch Dancing. you while you just fly, to the, fly all the way to the moon. I've only ever heard, uh, NSYNC's my favorite band, but I've only ever heard them do the clock radio. Can you believe that? <laughs> That's crazy, Dan. Yeah. That's some crazy that? shit. They're that good. I just know. You just know. I'm glad we're having a good time and it feels conversational. I want to stay like that, but if you could just try to direct your speech at the microphone and then okay. laugh off the microphone. Okay, I'm sorry. It's uh, okay. I got this. Uh, can you get any you closer? Never, you never heard some, like, like some nasty... It'll look good on camera. Don't worry. It'll be unnaturally close in real life, but that's just... Hey, that's show business. No, that's okay. That's, that's show, business, show business, baby. For, I've been in show business for 75 years, and uh, <laughs> this is definitely gonna be my crown jewel this i is feel the thing like I'm we're on a bus of. together yeah. oh yeah. yeah yeah just like on a greyhound bus like sweating a little you know yeah. it's fine there's alcohol coming out of my pores but what were you saying about what were you oh, oh you never fun? heard like a fucking no let's talk about greyhound buses <laughs> All right, hell yeah. let's talk about greyhound buses i'm not gonna let that slide you brought it up and i've like been good. on a greyhound bus how about you you did heroin so yeah yeah not much yeah i was more on a i was on greyhounds more when i was just a kid going to like rodeos and shit Rodeos for I went to one oh. at rodeos. I think it was probably oh. the two. Maybe I could use the plural. I'm not a lying piece of shit. Okay. But um, Greyhounds, Yankee games. Probably I went on a few Greyhounds. Yeah. All the connections are just fucked up. This is going to be a fun okay. episode to edit and go through. And my obsessive compulsive disorder when it comes to audio is really going to kick fun. in. It's going to be just fun. I won't sleep very well. Mm. I'm going to be nervous for you through osmosis. And I'm going to feel, feel how, like just up. Pacing if around. we could somehow keep this position, that was perfect. You both just spoke. It sounded so clear. Uh, I, f- so I feel like to... you're yelling at me. Uh-huh. Oh, I haven't begun to yell. It's, you're wearing the tank top and it's bitch, bringing out your aggression. I haven't even started. I... You're in my house, this is a loft. Do you want me to really start raising the fucking decimals in this room? Because I fucking will. It's basically an I'll... amplifier. Mm-mm, I'll fuck you up two times as well. It's loud. like I'm yelling into a ram's horn. I'll get my ram's horn out too and yell into the loft. Then what the fuck are you going to do? You're going to shit yourself. Probably. And then you're going to probably pick it up and touch it because you're a fucking psycho. I touch shit, but I touch my own. I touched other dog shit on accident when my puppy ate it and I scraped it out of its mouth. And it was a surprise. If I knew the shit was in there, I just would have let him eat it. And whatever happens, happens. Just kidding. You put it. I don't mind touching poop, I guess. I'm not going to. You could just wash your hands. <laughs> just put a little per- like this hand sanitizer on it. You know, that's why I carry it with me at all times, just in case. If you're in rehab and you're hanging out in your friend's room, it's not your room. You take a big old shit, foot long shit, because you haven't been shitting a lot in the past couple post, of years because you've been opioid. addicted to opiates. And there's a lot of fecal packed up in there. And um, you take the shit, you go to flush, you get up because you felt like it was big and you wanted to see what was going to happen. You wanted to keep an eye on it. That's not a blind flush. I knew, like, oh, that's an interesting thought. Take a shit and you know, I should probably get up and make sure this goes down. Oh, so is that a worry? From the get-go, you weren't, like, going I knew. to admire you, you your knew. creation. I could tell from the duration of time that my asshole was expanded, <laughs> that it was quite the log. And I pushed it out, and I felt that it was going to be a problem, so I got up. Um, didn't wipe my ass. No, I, I think I wiped my ass. I hope you so did. it wasn't that immediate, but wiped my ass quickly, <laughs> like a lady. 
Um, back to front, I like to get shit on my balls because it makes it, it like builds my musk. Oh, my it the flavor, yeah. 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 yeah, but um, and uh, got up, <laughs> saw that the now. saw that the turd was not going to go down. It was too big. Toilet was too small. Um, toilet immediately began to flood. Within seconds, there was going to be caca water all over the floor. Mm-hmm. Mm. So you decided to made a split second decision to eat. Didn't it? Didn't even think twice. I reached right into the water and I broke the log in half. Oh. I pinched it. Like I then use these three fingers. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that, that that he was telling me the story earlier, and I just want to say that's a pretty ballsy move that you did that right off the bat because I probably would have hesitated. Mm-hmm. And like I said, if it were in, in my house, there's a greater God damn it. If it was in my house, there's a greater chance that I would have just panicked mm-hmm. and I would just watch my bathroom be destroyed. Got towels for some reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, when I, I'm just so afraid of what people are going to think of me and I don't want to be the motherfucker that flooded the toilet and ruined the room. I can, I can see your hands shaking slightly at the thought of... My hands are shaking because I'm so focused on keeping this connection together and I'm sick of okay. all my <laughs> all my relevant input and my beautiful voice cutting in and out. Because it's, some, I like, just won't stand for it. Because I'm gonna have to edit this thing, and it's yeah. gonna just. The people in like Dubai are gonna get p- really pissed if they can't hear you. Well, it's gonna drive me batty. Fuck everyone else. Yeah. I'm gonna. It's gonna drive me batty. I, know, I was just gonna say it's <laughs> a good term. I haven't heard batty in a while. Yeah, I'm trying to bring back uh-huh. all I have those two. like filthy slurs like batty and uh-huh. like uh, G Willikers. Uh-huh. Shit, you wouldn't be able to say in church. Um, you know what? I'm really trying to bring back, and I can throw this out to you guys as a question you could answer. I want to bring back, bring back, speaking English. Um, <laughs> does that really get that really gets my goat? Like I love that. Gets like, goat. Oh, that really gets grinds my your gears. And grinds my gears. Ruffles your feathers. Mm-hmm. The first yeah. thing that popped into my mind that really gets my goat. It's it's horrifying. What is I'm it? I'm imagining like a horrible monster running out of the woods and just grabbing my goat. Like a chupacabra. Just running back oh. into the woods. That's not. I or an Arab. <laughs> normally an Arab. That gets your I guess goat? it makes sense. Yeah, when you say, oh, that gets my goat, that's not a good thing. So that makes sense. Uh-huh. Yeah, like you're a farmer and they come and get your goat. And yeah. that's like, uh-huh. I'm sick of them getting my goats. I'm sick of the tree monsters running out in the middle tree of the monster. night um, in the solstice. It's always at the summer solstice. It's always on the summer solstice. Longest and the day tree of the monsters year. run out and they grab my goat. They scare me. Uh-huh. And then I think, oh, there goes the goat milk. Goat cheese. Can't make feta anymore. No feta is made, feta. made out of goat milk, right? Fed, nah, there's nothing. Fed about it. Fed about it. Fed about it. Fed about that feta. Yeah. But as we, as there we, was something there. Uh, here's one as a positive, though. I have a friend of mine that says this all the time. Uh, like something that really butters my croissant. Ooh, butters my biscuit is what but, you're supposed to say. I like croissant though. It's I like a alliter- alliteration, so I like butters my butter. biscuit. Yeah, okay, butters I can my see. Biscuit. But that's uh-huh. a good thing. Like that gets me like uh-huh. that really butters my biscuit. Uh huh. That really makes my bird chirp. Bird chirp. Oh, I, you told me about bird chirp. Bird chirp. That was bird nice. chirp. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I like that one. I'm trying. Uh-huh. To, I'm trying to implement that too. Uh-huh. These are. This is the platform I'm running on for mayor. Mm-hmm. <laughs> these are my <laughs> slogans. That really makes my bird chirp. We're gonna stop. Let people mm. get your goats. No more goats getting mm. cat. That really... Fuck. <laughs> that really... Oh, man. That's really getting his goat. That really puts its talons in my daughter. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, too, and I don't even... Am I just going to have to straight up switch cords in the middle of... You got some duct tape? I have to, go to record me? while we're recording. Hey! It's nah, 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 no, I, I can hear it. I can. It's picking up on this. It's picking up on this. We got your. We got your epic pun. Hello, hello. Am I recording? Yeah, you're good. It doesn't look like it's recording. It's recording. All right. So I just want to say uh, thanks for thanks for tuning in and listening to us shoot the shit for a little while. Uh, Dan's mic stopped working, so we had to call it here. Um, tune in next week for another fantastic episode of the Problematics Podcast. Um, have have a great day. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay. That was a lot of fun, man. I hope to come back. Yeah, thanks for coming, friend. Dude, Dan, I'm super impressed with everything you're doing. Don't get such a stress. Yeah, Dan, you're... Yeah, let's hear the song again.